I had driven 400 miles across state lines because my ex-boyfriend, Caleb, and his friend were in dire straits. Caleb had swallowed his pride and begged me to come from Phoenix to Santa Ana to smuggle them out of a cult. Not a religious one. A traveling sales cult that attracts the adventurous and desperate. It started with some guy on the street. He said he hated Phoenix, which anyone could bond over. And he was looking forward to Cali. I sell magazines with my crew. We just travel the country and party for a living. Here, talk to my manager. Soon they were packed in a van with transient door-to-door salesmen who were a riot. Yet this life was rife with crime and abuse. The mag crew hit the pavement in heat or snow, 12 hours a day, six days a week. To stay motivated, they smoked crack or speed or shared fifths of liquor. Sundays were their day off, but they spent it in the van traveling to another city. Each morning they had group chants to remind them this was the best family they'd ever have, and this lifestyle made them free. No bills, no commitments, but they were off the grid. No phone, address, or resources. Too often, I met guys who seemed stable, but once we started dating, they needed a place to live, to borrow my car, to borrow money. Because they were so hot and fun, I bailed them out. Caleb had sauntered into my life when I was telemarketing my way through college. I was 19. That's a Blue's Clues backpack. (laughs) It was finals week, and I was working full-time to earn some $30 bonus. I'd quit smoking, but when this guy in a Hulk green shirt lit one up at work, I bummed a cigarette just to talk to him. We were 20 minutes late from break. I rushed in, worried, but Caleb stopped to chat with his boss. By 8.40, he had his headset put away and was regaling his neighbors with his constant stream of jokes and impersonations. Everyone was compelled to be his friend. After acing my finals, I prepped for New Year's Eve, Y2K. The world was ending. With Caleb in my sights, I arranged a trap. I threw an after party that never ended. It was the best of times. I lived alone off campus, raged every night. We called in sick at work on the same days, watched the sunrise to Fat Boy Slim, and found a trippy TV show, Teletubbies. <laughs> Caleb was a preacher's son from Illinois. So to rebel, he dropped out of college and went to Arizona. We hadn't been dating long when he lost his apartment and moved in with me. But he helped me too. My life had started to crumble. My ex was stalking me. One gathering at my place ended with medics and police. I barely ate or slept and was always sick. Through it all, Caleb offered support and distraction. He'd take a road trip on a whim, blow off his responsibilities, and generally enjoy life. I enjoyed that he had a car and could drive me to dinner at Arby's. (laughs) Sadly, it was towed. Even though I gave him the phone number, he never called. The car was auctioned off. Turns out he had unpaid tickets and warrants for skipping court. He couldn't be bothered. It was this Hakuna Matata philosophy that led him to quit a lot of jobs, but never said I quit. He just stopped going. I was also not forthcoming. It took me months to tell Caleb I had cheated in a drug-fueled stupor with one of his friends, basically in front of him. It was my rock bottom. Though I pleaded, Caleb dumped me. He and his friend, Andre, were both jobless and moved into a crack motel. It was cheap, but had hidden charges. They were so outraged about owing 25 cents for each local call that they wrote 25 cents to suck my cock on the mirror. The mag crew was their way out. For their interview, Caleb and Andre went to a hotel to meet the manager who was stoked because they were cute and charming. He gave them $20 each on the spot and hooked them up with a shared room, not as bad as their motel. 
He'd even buy their bus ticket home if it didn't work out. Because this job had a twist. It whisked them far from home. They'd spend 24-7 with a bunch of lost souls, teens who had run away or had babies they were trying to support, who had been homeless, who stole. Almost all were junkies. What they had in common was that their desire to get out of Dodge outweighed their common sense. In the same way my desire to hang with hot party kids outweighed my common sense. I thought I could do what I want and lie about it, but the truth always comes to light and reveals how shady you are. Caleb was better off than his colleagues. He had family. His dad owned a mattress factory. Caleb's prized possession was the world's comfiest pillow top mattress. He'd let me use it as long as I honored his one request. Don't have sex on his bed. Now that was unnecessary, as I was heartbroken and a born-again virgin. My first clue that Caleb might be in trouble was after he left, I met a guy at a rave in a different mag crew. I had a type. (laughs) This man was 31 and did not fit in. Because I was so young, I took him home with me. The next day, his hotel was 30 miles away. And I didn't trust him at my place, so I brought him to Thanksgiving at my grandparents' house, (laughs) where he complimented my mom's ass. At last, I ditched him at his hotel. An hour later, he called me, crying. His manager had the crew beat him up and rob him. He was stranded with nothing 2,000 miles from home. So I rescued him and got him hired at the bar where I worked. Later, he told me the lowest sellers had to fight each other, fight club style, and some girls got roofied and raped. Magcrew.com features these stories, including a missing section for kids who vanished or died. Caleb started leaving weird messages from payphones. Sometimes he whispered. When we spoke, it was hard to tell what was real because he was always joking. I'm so hungry, he said. We have to say, my school's having a trip for a contest to Acapulco. These magazine subscriptions, they're awesome. Just one would help a starving college student. But on their first paycheck, my friends found that after their room and meals were deducted, they got... $10 a day. Okay, they'd step up and sell, sell, sell. And if they did, the boss bought them food or beer. But next payday, when they could choose either $50 or pot, they realized they're trapped. They had no control over where they went, who drove them, who they shared rooms with. And if they quit, they got ditched on a roadside. They were not getting a ticket home. My friends needed me. So I tried to arrange to get them without having a way to call them. Since I was going to a massive party in LA on New Year's Eve, I would detour to pick them up. I was supposed to wait in the hotel lobby, but when I pulled in the parking lot, everyone was there smoking. As I walked over in my huge Jenkos and crop top, all eyes were on me. I thought Caleb had just been too chicken to quit. Not realizing the gravity of the situation and that he was ignoring me purposely, I hugged him, blowing my cover. Right away, a young, handsome guy questioned me. It was his boss. I had to act casual. Like, yeah, I'm a friend from Arizona. Happened to be near Santa Ana, total hot spot on New Year's Eve. (laughs) He wasn't buying it. Meanwhile, one guy was talking to someone he just met. I sell magazines with my crew. We just travel the country and party for a living. Here, talk to my manager. Sensing fresh meat, the manager pounced. I was eager to leave, but my friends needed their luggage, which they'd hidden. Caleb meant it when he said, everyone's brainwashed. Their roommates would tell the boss, who wouldn't let them leave, or insist they repay their tab, or worse. When the crew went inside, we followed. They were watching. Awkwardly, we waited as people drifted off. When the coast was clear, Caleb ducked behind an ice machine where he'd stowed their bags, and we ran across the parking lot. I wished my car was nondescript, but its bumper stickers were easily recognized. 
Before we were all in, Caleb yelled, go, go. And we thought we saw his manager come out as I frantically gunned it. On the drive to LA, Caleb said it was too hard to be around crackheads 24 seven. Though in hindsight, we were not much better. I realize I enabled the downward spirals of these guys. While my lifestyle was outrageous, I always kept a job and apartment and my scholarship. They couldn't keep up. And when they failed, I made it easy for them because I was drawn to passionate people who burn bright and burn out fast. And I burned through them like my little black book of matches. Though I prided myself on helping people, I was not a good influence. I was a fire starter. It had been one year since Caleb and I first hung out. This New Year's Eve was almost as magical. Even so, we were over and Caleb needed to get his life straight. The ride home was awkward. There was a disclosure I had to make. The guy I had cheated with, Shane, had moved in. He was out of town, but Caleb would recognize Shane's couch and his cat. <laughs> Caleb took it well, made a joke to compensate, but he did follow up on one thing. You had sex in my bed, didn't you? No, I said. I promised. Just tell the truth. And I refused. I wanted him to believe my boyfriend and I were on the floor next to the perfect bed, which I ruined. And because life is fair, Shane was a cheater. The next day, I put Caleb on a greyhound home, ending his rebellion. Now he has a family and owns the mattress factory. For him, that's freedom. 13 years later, I broke my pattern when my last boyfriend became homeless. I would not let him move in. So we planned to live in his truck outside. And could he just use my bathroom sometimes? <laughs> Do his laundry? <laughs> nope. Freedom for me means not being forced to have roommates. Good thing I never joined a cult. 